Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for this moment and for this opportunity to call on your name once more. It is our prayer that you would meet us at this appointed hour. We realize that you already know why we're here. Yes, yes. And we're praying now that, amen, the grace of God, the mercy of God, the peace of God mm -hmm. will continue to be with us and to lead us and guide us. We thank you for those that are standing in leadership. Yes. Yes. We ask that you continue to govern us and to provide protection for us. Yes. We realize that all things are working together. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And we thank you in advance thank for what you. we're about to do. Mm -hmm. Be with us today. Yes. 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 In Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. 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 Uh, let me do this, and that is I want to commend and I want to thank all of you all for being here today. This endeavor is not only critical, but it is a defining moment in our community and in the history of our people. As we celebrate Black History Month, I think it is very important that we understand that we have had so many African Americans who have contributed to the health and wellness of our people. And so we are here today to announce and to launch a very important initiative centered around Choose Healthy Life. We recognize that this pandemic has hit hard all Americans, but we also recognize that this pandemic has disproportionately impacted people of color. And as a result of that, we have come together today as a synchronized unit. We are most appreciative of the partnership the mayor is in support of this, and we have spoken on several occasions. His representative is here, and we would expect that he might be here before this is over. In addition to that, let's give the pastors a hand, the ministers a hand. I just want you all to give God praise for the ministers. And then secondly, I mean thirdly rather, I really want to commend St. James Medical Center, Nicole and her team, have done an outstanding job of working with us. Not only have we been testing, but we will also be engaged in doing vaccinations beginning Wednesday. We're gonna do 10 people today, and then we're gonna do others in the next few weeks. We are still stepping up to have the state provide us with the supply that we need mm -hmm. in a consistent way so that people of color can get vaccinated. That is going to be a chore because we are fighting on two fronts. First of all, we're fighting on the front of having our people to increase their trust and their confidence in the safety of the vaccine. Mm -hmm. But in addition to that, we're also fighting for the right supply to come into our community mm -hmm. so that this thing will not continue to ripple across our community. Mm -hmm. And so we are so, so appreciative. Nicole, Nicole, will you please just kind of raise your hand? She's going to speak here in a minute. But Nicole, come on, let's give her a hand. Nicole is the, Nicole is the president and the CEO uh, of St. James Medical Center. And then we also have the person with us today, the visionary, the founder of Choose Healthy Life. And that is none other than Deborah Frazier House. She has been, come on. She has been on the forefront, and she really wanted Newark included in this initiative. And I am profoundly grateful for that, because I do believe that Choose Healthy Life will assist us in increasing our numbers. The mayor wants his numbers increased, and rightfully so. Right now, we have about 5% of the people in our city, 4 to 5% of the folks in the city of Newark of color have been vaccinated today. We have to increase that number. We have to make sure that more people of color are vaccinated. And I do believe that this will make a huge difference. Certainly last, uh, but not least, in addition to all of those folks who have aligned with us, listen to me. We have, I believe, the greatest strength of all of the pastors who wanna see their congregation get vaccinated. And because of that then, it is my honor, it is really my privilege to say today that we have the blessing of the mayor 
of the city of New Jersey. Okay, the mayor of the city, the largest city in the state of New Jersey. Amen. And, uh, and, and I'm gonna ask that Eric would come up at this point. He is the business administrator for the city of Newark. Now, we're not gonna have a lot of speeches today because we want folks to get vaccinated today. Mm -hmm. And we want that word to go out more than just what we say today. So Eric, will you come up at this time, kind of represent the mayor till he gets here. I'm double masked, but if I take off one of my masks, you should be able to hear me better. Again, as Reverend Jefferson indicated, my name is Eric Pennington. I'm the business administrator for the city of Newark. The mayor, uh, Mayor Barack, and the administration agree wholeheartedly with Reverend Jefferson's concern that more of the vaccinations get into the arms of black and brown people who live in the city of Newark. Thus far, only 5% of all of those vaccinated are black and brown people. That is woefully inadequate. And we share in the hope uh, of any organization who wants to ensure that more black and brown people uh, get vaccinated. We too are partnered with Nicole at uh, St. James FUHC. She's done a great job. They come to the city of North to test the city uh, employees once every 10 days. And they're also doing vaccinations uh, in connection with the Department of Health and Community Wellness. We expect to continue to do so. We are grateful for uh, Reverend Jefferson and the things that he's doing. And we too will uh, seek to have clergy, including imams and others, uh, get out front and be tested and make sure, uh, rather vaccinated, to make sure that the uh, population that we serve is fully vaccinated. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Listen, at this time, uh, as I mentioned her a few minutes ago, uh, we normally call her the queen, but I don't know of anyone that shares a greater conviction for the health and wellness of people of color than Deborah Frazier House. All the way back to when AIDS were running rapid, she, along with Dr. Butts, were able to get, get millions of dollars so that we could impact our people and our community. And I do believe that she has a calling on her life. And I, I say that, and I say that in a very passionate and positive way, that, 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 that she has a calling on her life in the space of health and wellness. And if you don't mind, I want you to just kind of welcome her again to the city of Newark and have her to come and say some words at this time. Deborah Frazier House. Thank you, Reverend Jefferson, and, and I cannot thank Reverend Jefferson enough. I've known him for several decades, and everywhere I've turned and I needed the strength of one of the clergy I have also turned to Reverend Jefferson. So Reverend Jefferson, thank you for just being you um, and being here in Newark. I wouldn't want this to be kicked off anywhere else. Mm -hmm. Newark is one of the greatest cities I believe in, in the world. Mm -hmm. And it is a city in which we have to ensure that we keep black people alive. Mm -hmm. So what we're looking at today with the 10 ministers who I am humbled and thankful for today that have come here to pull up their sleeves and put a shot in their arms. They represent hundreds of thousands of black people in Newark, New Jersey that will be tested through their churches and religious institutions. So they're taking the first step. They're stepping into the breach, which is what leaders of the church do. We are so blessed to be here today. I want to introduce also Sherry Thompson, who is here today from the Ad Council. The Ad Council will be working with several organizations, and hopefully one of them is Choose Healthy Life. Um, the Ad Council's job and responsibility is to, uh, is to promote uh, vaccinations, remove vaccine hesitancy, mm -hmm. and to help us to get our people tested. So they're here in partnership to help us. I want to also say that I am extremely, extremely humbled that Reverend Calvin Butts and Reverend Al Sharpton have agreed to chair this initiative, which includes 50 churches and five cities. 
in the cities of New York, of Newark, Detroit, Washington, D.C., and Atlanta, Georgia. In Atlanta, Georgia, the chairman of our Choose Healthy Life chapter in Atlanta is the new senator for the state of Georgia, Reverend Raphael Warnock, all of which people ask me all the time, well, Deborah, how do you know all these ministers? And I tell them, because I'm old. And I, <laughs> I've been around so long. And, and, and they've helped me so much. And I just want to say that I'm blessed. I'm, I'm thank you so much. The media that showed up today, we want you to keep this story hot. We want you, we need you. Ask the Ad Council today, we need you to continue to talk about this because we need our people to get rid of the myths. <clears throat> They've been in a bad year where people have been talking very negatively to black people. But we're here to save each other's lives. And if not for these men, we would be nowhere. So I want to thank them, and I want to thank you and ask you to please continue to be with us. Very well. Very well. At this, at this time, we're going to bring uh, Nicole up. And uh, I, I, I think that Eric has, has done a lot to introduce you, Nicole. And I also want to thank you so much for the partner that you have been to us. And let me just say that we have tested now out of this site some 2,400 individuals out of this site have been tested. And I will also add this. One of the things that we have found is that persons have had chronic conditions other than when they came to get tested. A number of people had high blood pressure. And we were able to get those people to the proper place so that they could get treatment. But for that, we might have had persons with strokes. Mm -hmm. And I would hasten to add this, and that is I believe that the black church is beyond a doubt one of the major places where we can deliver health and wellness services in our city and in Amen. other cities. Amen. 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 We can deliver that. And so the faith-based community, the faith-based community, I believe, given the role that we can play, can do more than shout people. <laughs> we can do more than save people. Right. That's right. That's right. Amen. That's right. We can also save people right. when it comes to their health and wellness. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. As the pastor said, since May of 2020, St. James has been working with Metropolitan Baptist Church and the Willing Park Community Care Center to test people for COVID-19. Here at the Willing Heart Center, we have tested over 2,400 people. Citywide, St. James Health has tested over 15,000 individuals for COVID since May. We're pleased to be working with Metropolitan Baptist to expand the offering to include COVID-19 vaccines. The vaccines will begin each Wednesday as soon as the state's able to get us the inventory for us to open the testing site. We've been extremely aggressive in our efforts to secure more COVID-19 vaccines so we can expand our collaborative work with Metropolitan Baptist Church to get the community vaccinated. Currently, we have sites open at Eastside High School in partnership with the City of Newark and Shabazz High School. All COVID-19 vaccinations can, um, registration should go through newarkvaccine.com to register. At this time, we have a thousand people in the queue, and as we get the vaccines, we schedule them for appointments. St. James Health is making it a priority to make sure the vaccines get to the right people in the community first. We want to make sure that the hardest hit people in this city from COVID get the vaccine before anybody else, and that is our initiative here with Willing Heart Community Care Center. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I don't have the list, but I should have the list of those churches and those pastors of the 10 that Deborah mentioned. And if I could get that, I would just like to, to share that. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Ron. Right here. Okay, so, so here we have uh, Reverend Tim Atkin Jones. Tim is at Bethany, he's the pastor of Bethany. Reverend Vincent Rouse at Pleasant Grove. Reverend Omar McDonald is at St. Mark's Free Will Baptist. Reverend Glenn Wilson is at Pilgrim Baptist Church. 
Bishop Rudy Carlton is at Jehovah Jireh Praise and Worship Center. Pastor Paul is at City Hope Ministries. Pastor Javon Allen is at Peace Temple Church of God in Christ. Reverend Mark Bingham is at the Greater Mariah Baptist Church. And Reverend Dr. Ralph Branch is at Mount Calvary Baptist Church and then Metropolitan. So we have 10 churches that are here in our city. And we have come together. And not just these 10 churches, I want to be clear. We have pastors across this entire city who have engaged, aligned, unified, and ready to go out to inform, to educate, and to help people to understand the need for them to take the vaccine and to calm some of the fears around them, quote, taking it. We have a lot of work to do, y'all. Individuals, and this stuff can catch you on real easy when people start talking about, I'm not taking it. We need to overcome that kind of rhetoric. And we need to make sure that people are getting vaccinated. A few minutes ago, Nicole said that we have been very aggressive in going after more vaccine. That was a very kind media word. Um, we have been demanding that we would get more vaccine. And it is absolutely imperative that we do not create false expectations of having consistent supply when the supply has not yet been verified. And so we are encouraging our governor and the administration. And I believe that they are working it, but you all know as well as I do. Rudy, we need relief and we need relief real soon. Mm -hmm. So how do you spell relief? J-E-S-U-S. -S. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And by the grace of God, mm -hmm. my prayer is that we get more vaccines in our city to indeed help our own people. Are there any questions? Right quick. Are there any questions? Uh, Pastor, um, the mayor's not here. I don't know if maybe perhaps his representative wants to answer this if, if you even can. Back in August, when the clinical trials were going on, the mayor made some comments saying that citizens have a right to be skeptical and cautious of the vaccine. Do you think comments like that, you know, hurt the public? It helped contribute to pe contributed to people being hesitant about taking the vaccine? I, I, let, me, let me say this. I, I think what the mayor was doing was being very honest with respect to history. Mm -hmm. I, I think that when you look at what happened in Tuskegee, Alabama, as well as North Carolina, I, I think that they have earned the notion of trust, the distrust, lack of confidence. But I also believe that that is nothing that we cannot overcome if we educate, if we inform, and if we help folks to understand um, that, that this situation is very dire, and we need everyone to really try and take the vaccine. Yes, sir. Yeah. Following up on my colleague's question, how, how steep a hill do you think that challenge is? Listen, I think that's a great question. And, and let me say that I, I think that hill is steep. Um, we do not want to stand here today and underestimate or come across as if one, that cycle is going to be short. I, I think that uh, we're going to have to use social media. I think that it's going to take the faith-based community along with our city, along with others, other, other elected officials. I think we all have to be singing off the same sheet of music. And I think we all have to do our part with respect to that. And like I said a few minutes ago, this will not be easy because we're battling on two fronts. One is we have to indeed make sure that there's trust. And you know as well as I do that most of our institutions have lost the trust of people of color. Our financial institution, police department, and I can go on, but the black church still represent a source of trust and confidence in our community. And that's why I am so excited to have all of the ministers engaged in trying to, to overcome that. So we got to deal with the lack of confidence. And then, like I said a few minutes ago, even for the supply that has come out, the supply coming to the African-American community has been disproportionate to where it is going elsewhere. 
Any, anyone else right quick? Yes, Reverend. You talked about using social media. What other ways are you going to try to get through to the community? Is it going to be on, you're going to be on the ground? You're going to be knocking on doors? What else are you guys going to be doing outside? All of the above. Just like when you take a test, you have A, B, C, D, and it's all of the above. We intend to use all of the above. I think social media is going to be powerful. Let me just say this. All of us right now in our churches, most of us, 90% of us, are still virtual. And that in and of itself is very powerful because we're going to use that as a vehicle for which we can educate and inform. And so when you look at the masses of people that are covered under the umbrella of the households of faith, uh, the imams, you name it, I think that we can play a huge role in getting that message out, but I also believe we have to be intentional in terms of doing it. It has to be a top objective, and today is to say that it has been and it will continue to be, and I think that we're going to continue to improve those numbers. And St. James is going to partner with the churches to make sure we're doing education. We have doctors, nurse practitioners ready to do the education in these churches to get on these Zooms and make sure the community is able to ask questions. Um, we can't talk at people, we need to listen to the questions. You know, the frequently asked questions that you see on pieces of paper are not necessarily what people are asking my doctors and nurse practitioners. So we'll make them re readily available to all the congregations to be able to ask about the vaccine so we could continue to educate. Some of the biggest success we've had with vaccinations have been in places where we've been testing. So when we go into senior housing and we've been testing those same seniors since June, we're sending our same staff there because they know our staff, they're comfortable, they'll ask the questions. That'll be the same thing here. We tested 2,400 people. Those people know our staff. Many of them have been back for multiple tests. We'll be able to answer their questions and get them vaccinated. Nicole, what are the questions? You said not necessarily on paper. What are they asking? Dr. Brown, what kind of questions are you getting from the from the patients? This is this is our medical director, Dr. Melinda Brown. I have to give it to the doctor because I'm not the one getting the questions. <laughs> so the main questions we see from the patients are basically side effects. You know, there are a lot of myths out there as to what happens to patients after they get the vaccine, and patients just want to know what side effects are they expecting to find or to have. If I could just add follow up, how do you counter all the misinformation that's going on social media? Because that's where a lot of these people are picking it up. But how, how do you counter that? How are you guys? It is, is very plan? difficult to do that, you know, and it's just basically education is the most important thing. Getting out into the community through Zoom, social media, and just educating the patients are just going to be, is going to be big and getting them to come out and get vaccinated. And, and I would also say you all are helping us today. You all who are here today and your ability to help communicate that, I cannot state how profound, how prophetic, and how important that is. So I don't want to underestimate. In fact, I want to commend you all for coming today because part of what we're doing is being addressed right here today. Uh, we, we're in Black History Month, and I don't know a better way to celebrate black history than to have something like this right here that will help save lives. Okay, and, and okay. Deborah, please. I just want to add that, that for True Healthy Life is not just a program where people are going to be just getting information. It's a program that is actually funding churches with public health navigators as part of their new infrastructure. So you have a full-time employee on staff whose responsibility is to help with this message from the most trusted messengers in our community. So it's important that you know that. It's also important that you know that we also are partnered with the local United Ways in every one of these cities. So there's a large professional component with training and, 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 and we've also partnered with an organization called Resolve to Save Lives, headed by Dr. Tom Frieden, the Obama's CDC director from the Center for Disease Control. So we, 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 we've been engaged with, with Dr. Anthony Fauci, Dr. Messonnier. We have ensured that this is a, it's, it's, it's a sustainable program that allows for our trusted messages to get the most up-to-date medical information so that they can translate it into the language of the community from the most trusted voices that we have. So is there is there a um, is there an intention to make sure that you're reaching out to local indigenous media outlets 
um, and cultivating because these trusted mediums, uh, considering you know some of the problems that you have with social media, our own media communications uh, vehicles are important. So very well said. Very good, great question, Adrian. And the answer to that is yes. In fact, that is a very effective source that we need to tap into in order to make sure that is the case. And I'm glad you asked that. We don't want to leave that out. I, I also want to say this, and that is the, the mayor was tested last week, really set in a model and example that he himself believes in the vaccine. Was vaccinated last week. I'm sorry, he was vaccinated last week. And that in and of itself helps to set a tone that he believes in it. So the mayor of our city is on record as getting vaccinated. The pastors will be on record in terms of getting vaccinated. And hopefully we're gonna keep keep pushing it down. I, I do wanna say this, and that is, you know, while I might help to represent the ministers, I'm not the main attraction. These folks and all of the other ministers are really the main attraction. And I think it's very, very important that there is an acknowledgement of the teaming that is taking place and the partnerships that are taking place in order to make this thing work. We need everybody. And I'm gonna have Dr. Ralph Branch to come and therefore share on behalf of the minister. Good afternoon. It is indeed an honor uh, to be a part of such a great move, and I'll call it a move of God. Because our people are suffering, our communities are suffering, and the church, throughout its history has been the place that our people have looked to for security, for stability. Uh, since the pandemic began, we have been with families that have lost loved ones. We have helped them through difficult moments in death. We have helped them through difficult moments, even of how they would face tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. But I thank God that we now have the opportunity to help them live by way of this vaccine. So on behalf of the ministers here in the city of Newark, the churches and the pastors, the 10 that were named, and the many other churches and the many other religious institutions that we will work with, together we can get this thing done, together we will get this thing done. And the Bible declares that with God being our help, nothing is impossible. Amen. 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 You know, the one thing that, that I would really like to rise up, because the question came, how do we combat the negativity that's going on out in the world? Well, one way to do it is for the media, you all that are present, not to give us a 30-second moment, but give us a real serious time of interview and information and the people who trust your networks will begin to trust what's happening. Well said. Well said. Uh, we, we're going to now start the vaccination, but this you, you have to know how we operate. We had to have a closing, we had to have an opening prayer. Right? We had to have an opening prayer, so we have to have a closing prayer. And then after the closing prayer, we're going to start vaccinating. We're going to vaccinate, Nicole, 10, ten, ten people. Ten people. Ten ministers that we're going to do that today. Everyone else can get signed up for Shabazz on Friday. And that, to me, is going to be the most important thing that we want to spread, if you all don't mind. We want to spread that because, you know, a picture is worth a thousand words. So if they can see ministers being vaccinated, I think that will go a long way. So we're going to ask now that uh, Dr. Glenn Wilson uh, would come, uh, Pilgrim Baptist Church here in our city, and after he would therefore close us out in prayer. Now, I want to say this. This has gone very well because every preacher that has come up today, they did not preach. It's hard to put this kind of stand in the front of us that we don't preach. I, I just, I, I just, <laughs> Let us pray. Father, as we come together, we know that our help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. And we are so grateful, Lord, for we are people coming together here, the pastors, Lord, the media, coming together to learn the Lord and to do better as in the life, in the saving of life of the community. 
especially African American and brown people. We just thank you, dear Lord, for just the lifting of our spirits. And as we move forth, dear Lord, let this day be a day, dear Lord, of celebration, not of something, dear Lord, that is just washed over or just pushed aside, but of celebration. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. 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 See, uh